Debuting on September 10, 1993, The X-Files follows FBI agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully as they investigate a government conspiracy to cover up the existence of extraterrestrials. Mulder believes we are not alone. The X-Files, a new dramatic series, premiering Friday, September 10th on Fox. Starting off as a cult hit, it soon became a cultural phenomenon. <laughs> Hello, can I help you? Agents Mulder and Scully, FBI. Creating a whole generation of skeptics and believers, scientists and law enforcement. So come take a trip back in time with me as week by week we'll look at each and every single episode of this favorite television show of mine. Today we'll be looking at the very first episode that started it all, simply known as The Pilot. The series opens with a young woman frantically running through the woods away from someone or something. A bright light envelops the woods and a dark figure emerges standing over the young woman as the light takes over both of them. The following morning the woman's body is found with two marks on her lower back. It's noted that this appears to have happened in the past as Similar incidents have happened all to individuals in the graduating class of 1989. We're at FBI headquarters and we are introduced to Agent Dana Scully, played by the very beautiful Jillian Anderson. Recruited out of medical school, she is tasked with working alongside and debunking Agent Fox Mulder, who is working on a project called The X-Files. Am I to understand that you want me to debunk The X-Files project, sir? The X-Files being a project dealing with unexplained phenomena. Fox Mulder is an Oxford-educated psychologist who wrote a monograph on serial killers and the occult, and thought of as the best analyst in the violent crime division. He's also known as Spooky Mulder for his work in the unknown and unexplained. In the basement, Scully meets with Mulder, who is a little more than suspicious of Scully's real intentions. Actually, I'm looking forward to working with you. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, really? I was under the impression that you were sent to spy on me. Mulder shows her evidence from the young woman found earlier named Karen Swenson. He notes she was the fourth in her class to die under mysterious circumstances, along with others from across the country. He then asks her if she believes in extraterrestrials, and Scully, being the skeptic, expresses her disbelief in Mulder's theories. I would have to say no. She will be doing a lot of this throughout the series, by the way. While flying to Belfleur, Oregon, their plane experiences some unexplained turbulence, which Mulder apparently could give two shits about. Driving near town, they experience issues with the radio, and Mulder stops to spray paint an X on the road, which, uh, if you look at Scully's body language, she seems pretty confused by the whole thing. Mulder has arranged to have the body of the third victim, Ray Soames, exhumed. Despite protests from the county medical examiner, the coffin is opened, and what is revealed is not human. It's not so much opened as it's dropped by incompetence from morons. During an autopsy, Mulder starts losing his shit, asking what this thing could be. Now, as much as I love Mulder, I mean, look at the body. I mean, is anybody gonna tell him? You? How about you? Well, Scully points out that it's most likely in a probably an orangutan, which I mean is pretty obvious. They do, however, find a metallic implant, which is a well-known sign of alien abduction. Mulder and Scully visit a psychiatric hospital where Ray Soames was prior to his death and meet two of his classmates, Billy Miles, not to be confused with Billy Mays. Hi, Billy Mays here for OxyClean, the stain specialist. And Peggy O'Dell, who is wheelchair bound. Peggy has a meltdown and they discover she also has the marks on her lower back. Mulder explains to Scully that he believes they are victims of alien abduction. That night, Mulder and Scully head to the forest to investigate why the kids were in there in the first place. Scully comes across a gray ash on the forest, which she believes to be part of cult activity. A local detective arrives and tells him they're trespassing and to leave or face arrest. Back in the car, Mulder and Scully face a bright flash and Mulder loses it as he notices they lost nine minutes. Loss of time is another reported incident in alien abduction cases. At the motel, Scully notices she has the same markings on her lower back. She rushes to Mulder's room and disrobes, making Mulder the luckiest goddamn man on earth. She breathes a sigh of relief as he points out they are just bug bites. Now for someone that is such a skeptic, this whole thing really seems to be getting to her. While in the room, Mulder explains the story of how when he was 12, his 8-year-old sister just disappeared. She just disappeared out of her bed one night. Just gone. Vanished. No note, no phone calls, no evidence of anything. This story becomes the whole motivation for why Mulder investigates the X-Files. Mulder receives a mysterious call claiming oh, Peggy O'Dell has died, and I don't know why, but when he answers this phone, it always makes me laugh. What? Who is this? Who is this? At the crime scene, it said she was running into traffic, the same girl who was wheelchair-bound at the hospital. She was running? On foot? 
Scully notices her watch is stopped at the same time the agents experience their time loss. Mulder and Scully arrive back at the motel, finding it on fire and losing all of their evidence. The medical examiner's daughter, Teresa, was the woman that called. She's worried that she's next and has the same marks as well. Also, during this scene, Teresa suffers from a nosebleed, and thanks to high definition, you can see the apparatus they use to pump the fake blood. So yeah, 0 out of 10, worst episode ever. It was, without a doubt, the worst episode ever. Rest assured that I was on the internet within minutes, registering my disgust throughout the world. The medical examiner and officer from earlier arrived to take the young woman back, and it's revealed the officer is Billy Miles' father. Uh, you gotta love this place. Every day is like Halloween. Mulder and Scully return to the cemetery, only to discover the other bodies from the other victims are missing. Mulder believes Billy Miles was the one responsible for the murders, and Scully at this point just isn't having it. Billy Miles. The boy in the hospital. The vegetable. The agents return to the hospital and Scully, pulling up the sheets on Billy's feet, notices he has the same ash substance she found in the woods earlier. Director Quentin Tarantino watches this scene intensely. Scully claims he was in the woods, so the agents head back. A scream is heard and the agents head off in that direction. Scully is ambushed by Billy's father, who then confronts Mulder with his shotgun. Another scream is heard and Billy Miles' father takes off in that direction. We see Billy Miles standing, holding Teresa, the medical officer's daughter. His father attempts to shoot him, but he's stopped just in time by Mulder. The bright light from earlier returns, consuming the area and just as quickly as it came, it's gone. Billy and Teresa are just fine, and Billy is even able to walk and talk again. Scully conveniently misses all of this, which will be another reoccurring theme throughout this series. Mother, what happened? There was a light. Billy is being hypnotized, giving his recollection of what happened, the abductions, the tests. Scully, watching behind a two-way mirror with the agents who assigned her and a mysterious smoking man we saw earlier. She gives her field report, and of course they don't believe her as she has no evidence. She does, however, still have the metal implant, which she hands over to her superiors. As she leaves, we see the mysterious smoking man walk by again, heading to her superior's office. That night in bed, Scully, staring at her clock, gets a call from Mulder. He explains that their case files on Billy have gone missing. We then see that mysterious smoking man once again placing the implant Scully handed over into a case and put away in a labeled box. Now this son of a bitch, this smoking man is going to be around throughout this series. This guy's just a total piece of shit. He leaves the room revealing it to be the Pentagon. The X-Files debuted with a 7.9 rating and a 15 share, meaning roughly 7.9% of all television equipped households were watching the series premiere. Roughly 12 million viewers. This is the only episode in the series that does not have the regular opening credits as Chris Carter was not satisfied with how they looked at the time. Dana Scully was based off Cleary Starling from the Silence of the Lambs, both in look and attitude. However, Jillian was not originally the studio's first choice, as they wanted someone taller, leggier, blonder, and breastier. They originally wanted Pamela Anderson, and in, yeah, as attractive as a young 1993 Pamela Anderson was, the woman cannot act her way out of a wet paper bag. And also, I think Jillian is far more attractive anyway. I mean, I might be a little biased since I've had a crush on her since I was a kid, but I think she's far more attractive. The pilot script was the only teleplay David read during 1992, as he wasn't fond of working for television. He suspected it wouldn't last more than a month, but was impressed by the script saying I read it and I thought it was a really good story. The show was largely influenced by Kolchak the Night Stalker and grew to influence other cult hits like Supernatural and the extremely popular The Walking Dead. The pilot is a solid opener for the series, a little slower than modern television, which may be a barrier for today's audiences with their lower attention spans, you know, because of shit like TikTok. This furry dad is meeting his daughter for the first time. What the hell is that? The show really laid the groundwork for the more serialized television we are accustomed to today. However, it does have a lot of one-off episodes that I think are missing from modern television. Anyways, and thanks for watching. Check back next week as I will be looking at the very next episode in Deep Throat, which I'm sure we will all be very mature about and definitely not make any childish jokes. Comment below what you think of the pilot or X-Files as a whole. Also, if you could like and subscribe, it would help me greatly. Take care.